So for this project, we chose to use conventional solar panels. Conventional solar panels, they're pretty good size, they're relatively heavy, but they are cheap and they're easy to replace as a result of being cheap. Um, there are some other options for solar panels in a situation like this. Um, we're using these panels on some of our larger vehicles where the amount of solar requires us to use a lighter weight, more auto-specific solar panel. However, they are expensive, two to three times the cost of a normal panel per watt. So if we can get away with it, which we obviously are right behind us, um, we can put a vehicle out that'll pull that three kilowatts um, for a lot less money. So it makes it really something accessible to more people. So, however, it's a challenge because these are big, they're square panels. Um, what we really wanted to do was try to maintain a certain amount of aerodynamics with the vehicle. So we chose to um, create kind of a nose to the trailer. So we took our first two panels and we put them in kind of a, a triangular nose position so that we could shut a little bit of the of the air that we're going to be pushing um, which tends to be pretty significant as far as decreasing range on an EV so already pulling a trailer we're pulling that range down so we wanted to wanted to get a decent amount of aerodynamics so these two front panels as you can see are those um, panels that um, consist of that of that nose situation so they go up that way the sides come up as you can see it's pretty straightforward we have a switch system to um, raise and lower the actuators so the actuators they automatically stop when they're up they automatically have you know a little limit switch when they're down each one is fused just slightly above what they take so should you run into something or or come down on top of something it would increase the amperage draw and pop, pop the fuse so then you need to go and see what's going on there the one thing about the conventional panels that can be challenging in a situation like this is um, there is a glass front on them. So when you're putting them on top of your RV like people have been doing forever now, um, no problem. You know, you'll find very few people who are experiencing broken panels. So although these solar panels are theoretically designed to be out in a field on a frame, they've done really well on vehicles. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen our solar electric VW bus, but for at least six years now, I've been beating the crap out of that thing and it just keeps coming back for more. I've had a thousand watts of LG solar up there forever. I use it like a truck. Um, the things come slamming down a few times and the panels are still putting out the same amount of power as when I purchased them. So pretty amazing. Um, you'll notice on these panels here, you can see this polycarbonate. So we did put a layer of polycarbonate on the front of these panels since those are going to be the ones that are really going to be um, the most vulnerable to rocks coming up. I also did kind of a little bumper in the front of the bottom edge of that panel to make sure that, you know, in that particular area um, we have a good defense against rocks. So the sides, not so much the rear or the top, not so much of a problem, but it is those front two panels which is why we put the polycarbonate on there. So it does add some complexity to opening it. We need to open those panels a slightly um, first to get the sides open. Um, normally you wouldn't have to do that, but we really like the idea of the polycarbonate. It just gives added um, confidence when traveling. And they can be removed when you stop, especially if you're stopping for longer periods of time. Just unbolt it, store it, and you'll have you know, the extra power without that. So I've seen, as I mentioned, from 22 to 2500 maximum watts. That's been under relatively decent amount of sun, which the heat does decrease the output. So you'll get these kind of fall days where you'll see, you'll probably see up near the rated um, power of the panels up near 2800. But average, I'm going to say we're going to see from 22 to 2500. So we still haven't got a really accurate um, daily um, tally, but I have seen 12 kilowatt hours, not even trying. So that's pretty encouraging as far as how much we can actually pull. And we are seeing each panel putting out their rated power. So we're pretty stoked about that. We're going to be uh, pulling it up to Lake Superior today and getting it out in the open and really seeing what it, it can pick up. And then we'll be putting it into the Tesla to keep roaming. So pretty exciting. This is the philosophy of Solarola, which is independent travel and independent living. So we also like the idea of, of tiny homes within our solar powered vehicle world. 
so you'll always see a living space with our vehicles whether it's the camper or the trailers so um, just wanted to mention that you know this the whole lifestyle is is important to us and and how free one can be when you're charging up the sun.